What's going on, guys? Welcome to All Access Magic on this beautiful Tuesday afternoon. It's a little later than two o'clock. A little later than two, but it's it's you know, <laughs> it is closer to three than two We're at this point. In the two hour or the two o'clock, it is still. <laughs> yeah, it's practically two o'clock right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, if you had a meeting at two and you showed up at two fifty-five, how do you think they'd feel? I did that once. For an interview, I showed up like an hour and a half late uh, and got out of it. And Dude, one time I showed up for a virtual gig three hours late because I got the time zones wrong. Oh, yeah, that's not good. That's not good. And I should have gotten it right because I was in Vegas and they had NYC at the end of their Instagram name. <laughs> so I should have known they had this big live event. Yeah. But uh, yeah. We, uh, yeah, I showed up an hour and a half late for an interview once and uh, got there. And I, thank goodness I... I well, the problem was it was the uh, it was at four o'clock in the morning the interview, so oh, I geez. I got up was all good to go put my suit on and then fell asleep in the chair, <clears throat> and uh, yeah it's not a good thing. Called oh no, said, that's rough, dude. Yeah. Said oh well, my dad took my vehicle and uh, I'll be in shortly when he gets home from work and and they were good about it so it was good. I the best thing is I told the lady she said if we talked to your previous bosses what would they say about you. I said that I'm never late for anything. Wow. <laughs> After being wow, wow. half late. So never wow. late. Better better late than never, though, right? So, exactly. Better late uh, than never. Well, I think we should bring this guy in and get right to it. Um, so uh, do you want to announce him? Yes. All right. Today we have a very special guest. I'm really excited to have on uh, someone that you've probably seen a lot of their work, a lot of their photography, and uh, and without further ado, let's bring on the man, the myth, the legend, Daniel, the man, the man, the, the myth. myth, the legend, Savarito. <laughs> <laughs> we were so off sync. I've never seen us be that off sync. We never him. missed the man, the myth, the legend. We never that missed the man, the myth, the legend. But there we go. What's going on, Daniel? How's it going? Everybody going? It's going good. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us, man. Yeah, thanks for coming on this afternoon. Um, so, Daniel, I don't, I don't remember if we've met before. To be honest, I don't. We, yeah, I don't think we've ever met, but. Um, I don't know if we've been on Discord ever, either. Oh, maybe. Mm, potentially. Sure. But uh, but I know Blaze was telling me a little bit about you before, and I was like, oh, I've probably yeah. seen your work everywhere. So. Exactly. Yeah. I, I see most of nudes. <laughs> he took some nudes. Is that what he said? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This bad magazine stuff. <laughs> Dude, every magician's OnlyFans is just populated by some Danny shots. <laughs> But um, but thank you again for, for joining us, Danny. And uh, and you know it's actually interesting that we're on um, on this particular YouTube channel because uh, people may not realize that you um, were actually a big part of like Xavier's upbringing in magic. Weren't you one of the first people to show him a magic trick? Yes, we actually went to high school together, uh, and I was actually doing magic uh, well before him, uh, and I was just pretty much doing magic. Very much after run uh so one of my tricks and pretty much asking like what do you do man take to the top and ever since then it's been dramatic wow man yeah that's crazy um yeah so when you were uh, when you were growing up like what got you interested in magic particularly like when did you start so i started when i was 11. oh god gotcha. oh. um my uncle in colombia actually was like a little was magician, not a uh, professional magician, but they kind of did, you know, like most uncles. Um, but he had like an old book he gave me, he showed me a couple of tricks, like the one that disappeared with the elbow. Um, he gave me like a little magic wallet and just took me back to New York and been doing it ever since. Um, yeah, 16, I went to Abercrombie for the first time. No, I'm probably a little younger than that. Um, and I bought the Smithali deck. Uh, mm. Gave it to everyone individually in class. And then the teacher found out that I could do magic and actually could do it for the whole class at this point. Ah. Uh, it was a suicide phase. And then after I did it for the whole class, everyone realized it's the same card. 
It's only it's only to us, man. Yeah. <laughs> There's only one way this thing goes. <laughs> it is funny though that 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 trick alone, like that deck of cards, has started so many magicians in Magic. Yeah. Like I I always loved Magic as a kid and had like a little Magic kit and stuff, but really got into it when I was in like grade nine. And I went to Canada's Wonderland, and there was a magic shop or a booth there, and they had a Svengali deck, and the guy showed it to me, and I was like, I need one of those. And went home, and we had relatives over from England and did like a 100 tricks for them. But again, every time you pick the same thing. And so they were like, the guy's like, uh, <clears throat> let, me, uh, let me do this. Let me try uh, uh, showing you a trick, and did a key card trick and blew me away. Mm. So... Yeah, it's uh, it's actually crazy how useful this Vengali deck is, like, after, you know, beyond just the original, like, trick of, of the whole deck changing. I mean, you can use it for so many things, like, the like some of the cleanest forces and things. But I also, saying that, don't own a Svengali deck and never have. So <laughs> I actually just recently bought a Svengali deck uh, because of that. Yeah. Uh, doing some, like, different forces, uh, any cards, uh, any number. Hmm. Uh, really good with that. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, because it's it, it is at every number <laughs> <laughs> to wherever you need it to be. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's awesome, man. And so now, now people nowadays know you more as the magician's photographer, and so you have taken photos of like some of all the biggest names in magic, and you're a really like skilled photographer. We've done a bunch of shoots together before. Uh, yeah. It's been a while, but um. What, uh, when did you start in photography? Was it way after getting into magic? Well, after. Um, I think I got into the photography maybe in my 20s, 38 now, I think 39 next month. Um, so I've been doing photography now 15 years. Give it to me. Mm, wow. You're almost as old as Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm getting up there. I'm not that old yet. You know? <laughs> yeah, but it does give us an insight of how old X is, because mm. I mean, it's been a mystery for a long time. So yeah, uh, yeah, no. I'll but do some calculations. Uh, although X just texted me and said that my mic is super low. But can you? You can hear me, okay? I can hear you fine. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Sounds good. So I don't know. Yeah, I asked if Daniel's was because Daniel's to us was really low, and he said no, it's fine. So it's yeah. Streamyard is uh, is acting up. So we'll see. But uh, yeah. Oh yeah, maybe. Well, yeah. He he just texted me as well. Ryan's mic is super low, which is yeah. interesting because I can hear you just fine. Yeah, he's got as loud and clear. But oh. Uh, I, hopefully he said he texted me he said it's better now so hopefully it worked itself out okay, okay. Uh, yeah, jared so said uh, oh snap x is here too what's up man uh but that was technically me uh yeah. <laughs> messaging yeah. garvin saying hey hey but uh, garvin it's good to see you and maribel good to see you as well you for joining us maribel <clears throat> so. so yeah so what draws you you think to photography do you think it's a similar kind of mindset or interest like do you think there's any similarities to what makes you interested in magic that is similar to photography or is just two totally different interests, like different hobbies? Uh, I mean, I'm very like visually attracted. So like, I, I like visuals, colors, um, mm. but I think anything that you do for long enough can be equated to magic or anything else. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Is this a set of skills, a set of tools that you use to create something or do something? Yeah, totally. Yeah. What are your favorite types of shots to do? Like, what are your favorite? uh kind of uh like most fun you know shoots so i see it outside of so i did a little fashion shoot with a friend of mine uh, about a year or two ago and that was a little bit more more entertaining for me just because that location um one of my friends had like a bunch of outfits and did makeup here use different lightings and that was actually like the funnest shoot uh, just because there's a lot more involved into it Mm. Versus, like, I think me and Blaze used to let's meet up in 20 minutes. We got 30, 40 minutes to shoot an hour and we're out of there. Yeah, I'm kind of, yeah that's, that's kind of every time with Danny. I'm just like, so what are you doing 
um, now. <laughs> what are you doing, uh, what are you doing right, right Blaze, today? <laughs> Blaze probably could have met you like four hours earlier, but he had to blow dry the, the hair and stuff and get it ready for photos. <laughs> that takes a long time. So. Uh, don't worry about it. Don't worry. I mean, I remember one time I was like, hey, Danny, what are you doing right now? And then we, uh, I was like, you want to go climb a mountain <laughs> and shoot some photos? <laughs> And then him, Carlos, and I just went hiking up Runyon and got lost shooting some photos. And I feel like we took a longer way back down than we did going up. And, <laughs> but it was a fun time either way. That's awesome. Now, this guy was covered with uh, aluminum foil. Yeah. And the dogs were passing by him. Yes. Yeah, oh. dude, it was so crazy. <laughs> yeah. That'd be interesting. Yeah, he had his whole face covered up with like tin foil for some of the shoots, and we were just like in this hot day up on the uh, the mountains, oh. wearing like leather jackets and tin foil on your face. Yeah, it does not sound like fun. But uh, Daniel, do you find when magicians call you to to do a photo shoot and stuff that they're always like, "Oh, I need cards like in front of my face" or or stuff like like there's those iconic magic photos that. Do you find that magicians are like, I need this one? Oh, so I mean, I try not to use cards for the most part. Um, because um, I, I mean, I, I hate to have my photos look like you know, no offense to anyone else, but like those cheesy magic shots. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I wanted to look a little bit more natural while still looking magical. I think using the device that I use uh, gives it a little bit more of a theatrical, magical feel. Mm-hmm. Um, without having to add uh, so much props. Yeah, no, I I remember someone telling me years ago, uh, I was doing a photo shoot and they, before I went, they said to me, like, go online and look up like your favorite music artists, stuff like that, models, and look at photos with them and, and bring some of those, like what kind of photos you like. Uh, and he was like, because we are not using any playing cards or not using any props, nothing like that. He's like, you want to look professional, but I find like so often you, you go on someone's website and you get the, the card fan in front of the face or something like that. And it's like, who's taking these photos? So, yeah. but I just wondered if it was magicians instead of the photographer, when the magician shows up and is like, I really want to do this one. Yeah, exactly. It, I mean, it, for the most part, I think, I mean, for me as a magician, I try not to use cards for yeah. the photos, but I think uh, a photographer <laughs> that isn't in the magic realm, they're going to ask to use the, the cards just because they feel like it may uh, put everything together for them. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it, it does make sense. I mean, in some aspects, but yeah, I like that. Uh, Tigger T is uh, is using her mom's account today. So said uh, mentalists like they, they're getting a headache in pics. And it's true. Every mentalist, I mean, I don't, but every mentalist is always like, oh. <laughs> Dude, it should be, yeah, it should be like a, uh, an ibuprofen commercial or something. Yeah. <laughs> I just always wonder like on stage, are they doing this as well? Like, let me read your mind. And I'm like, what? You don't, you don't need to do that. Like it's a little, yeah. It's a little weird. But. Yeah, there was one that I that came to mind actually recently because um, you know Blackpool Magic Convention just happened, and so there were all these magicians that were posting photos from Blackpool, um, and it's like you have these these performers that are taking photos with other people you know like a couple of magicians together and it's funny seeing the magicians who only know how to do their their magician pose in every photo but mm -hmm. they're just taking a selfie or something so it's like i see like uh Ooh. these two well i i saw th this one it's these two people they're just in the middle of a convention hall taking a photo and he's taking a photo with i think it was amanda nepo uh or, or some other like you know person who was lecturing there and the guy the guy she's just standing there like and he's like <laughs> with one arm out <laughs> just, like, that's the, the one pose like that's his that's his magician pose is the one hand oh, that's funny yeah it's uh it's wild there's so many funny magician poses do you have to kind of train people to not do that like to to really snap them out of it when you're uh when you're doing a shoot with them to get them to be more natural i mean we, we've had to together yeah uh, it's I mean, for the first uh, couple of minutes is getting people comfortable. No, yeah. no one likes to be in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. 
He's saying yes, Blaze. He had to teach yeah. you how to not do that. Blaze, Blaze is so socially awkward. He's like, where should I put my hand? <laughs> <Dude, I'm just, laughs> what, what do I do with my hand? Yeah. Um, but I mean, well, Danny, sure, Danny yeah. always does this thing, which makes the photos look really cool, but always is like painful for me, which is he always finds this, he'll, he'll find like this one beam of sunlight that's perfectly shining into your eye and he'll be like i need you to move just like an inch back i need you, like right there and it'll be the one position where my eyes are actually burning like in serious pain because the sunlight is going straight through my contact lens through my contact lens magnifying i feel some ignition happening and then you're just like no this is perfect and then my eyes are like like watering <laughs> We sat in LA. Um, so Blaze is very um, sensitive to light. Yeah, and... <laughs> that's only because he doesn't go outside. I Dude, mean, every every photo that every photo <laughs> that we took, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. So you got to take a picture of him inside and then <laughs> crop his face out <laughs> from the one inside. Oh. Yeah, dude. But I've I've actually realized recently doing a shoot like my girlfriend's a photographer as well and so I've been doing some, I did a couple of shoots with her recently and I realized that like I'm way better if I take my contacts out because if I don't know what I'm looking at it's a way better photo. It's I'm when I'm when I'm like looking at you and I'm like actually focused on you it's like it's not a sexy face it's not a good it's not a good expression when I'm actually looking at the camera, but when I just see like a haze and I have no idea, it's way better. Well, that's funny. So Daniel, who is the, who's, do you have one magician that you've taken photos of that you were like, I never thought this would happen. Or like, this is someone that you looked up to, you know, when you were growing up that you got to, uh, to photograph. I mean, a jaded New Yorker. So I feel like I'm impressed with most of the stuff, but I think, I mean, for me, I think shooting in California was probably one of my best experiences. Mm. Uh, it's like, I think that's where like a lot of, or kind of this all came about was like mm. getting into shooting the um, Nice. I mean, Lays, uh, Jeremy, um, everyone else throughout that uh, time there was, uh, Probably like at that time. I mean, I enjoyed people, so that was... Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Nice. That's all right. Is there anybody that you would aspire to uh, do photos for, like David Copperfield or something like that? Um, I'm actually trying to set up something uh, with Doug right now. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And uh, I think with him, uh, he's probably one of the people that I've been actually really wanted to be with for a while yeah yeah nice yeah nice. sweet i feel like you have a unique insight into because you've you know you're from new york and you've you were based there for a really really long time like multiple times and then you lived in la you got to experience that magic community and now you're over in chicago correct yeah. so now you're all in the the chicago magic lounge scene uh so one, I guess I would ask, like, what was your experience like moving to Chicago? And then how would you compare the different magic scenes in all these different places? Um, I feel so. I mean, I, I've said this a lot. I feel like New York doesn't have like a uh, magic scene mm. in terms of like that community. Um, California probably has the best uh, community for magic, I think, mm -hmm. by far. Mm. Um, having before we had the money that um, meetings with Jimmy Griffith, um, some of the magic shots, and a lot of the traditions actually lead up to like uh, session versus over here in Chicago. I mean, we do have the Chicago Magic Lounge, um, and people meet up from time to time, but it's not the same because it's still like very city like. Hmm. It's New York, like I'm just too busy to sit down and sit off for like an hour or two. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's been a great experience being over here at the lounge and actually seeing like multiple performers each time and seeing uh, everything that people are doing now. And that part is great. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Well, do you think we should get to know Daniel a little better? I think that's a great idea. I think we definitely should get to know Daniel a little bit better. So, whether ready or not, here we come. 
Ladies and gentlemen, it's that time. It's time for 20 questions. It's time for 20 questions. Yeah. It's time for 20 questions. It's time for 20 questions. Yeah. Put two minutes on the clock. Two minutes on the clock. Put two minutes on the clock. Two minutes on the clock. Here we go. All right. And we're back. Now, uh, did you, were you able to see any of that just now? No. Oh, gotcha. Okay. <laughs> so good to know. Good to it's, know. It's interesting. Cause like when, when you play it, like we're backstage, we could see it, but we can see, I think it's because Danny's on an iPad. Oh uh, yes. Okay. So that would make sense. Yeah. Yeah. So there was a whole jingle. There was a whole transition, man. A whole song. <laughs> but, yeah. Epic song. Epic song. It's an epic song, man. You miss it. It's a good one. You missed this. You'll have to rewatch your own interview so you can see the, the transitions, man. It's the best part of the show. Yeah. So. By far. Uh, so, Danny, what's going to happen is we're going to go back and forth rapid fire. We're going to give you two minutes um, and to uh, answer the questions the best that you can. Uh, and we'll go back and forth. Are you ready? All right. You got the clock up. All right. Clock is going. So, seven, six, Five, four, three, two. Dream vacation destination. Uh, biggest pet peeve. Uh, blame. <laughs> biggest mistake during a performance. Uh, all of them. <laughs> what always makes you laugh? People. Uh, what's your secret talent? Uh, party. First time you ever saw a magic trick. <laughs> I think when I was 11, uncle. Uh, if you could have one superpower, what would it be? Uh, not doing magic. <laughs> Dream performance venue. Um, well, access magic. Uh, most cherished memory. Wrong. <laughs> favorite food. Lasagna. Oh, favorite movie. Um, what is it? Um, what is the worst job you ever had? Oh, I sold newspapers door to door and I'm out of here. Uh, really? Uh. A favorite magician? Very so, uh, if you won the lottery, what's the first thing you'd buy? Another lottery ticket. <laughs> what's your most highly recommended magic product or book? If you could remake any movie and star in it, what would it be? The Hangover. Uh, would you rather feel like a potato or look like a potato? Depends what kind of, uh, what it would be used for. If you had one wish, what would you wish for? Um, a private jet. Nice. nice. All right. So that was pretty far. We made it through 18 of the 20 questions. Yeah. yeah. Not too bad. Not too bad. We'll go through the last couple. Just get them off there. But uh, favorite toy growing up? Ninja Turtles. Ninja nice. Turtles. A good favorite one. sports team? Uh, I don't watch sports, but if I were to say, I'll say the match. The Mets, the Mets Scott, nice. very, very New York answer. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there you either have the Mets or the Yankees, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then you'll kill each other over it. So it's all right. That's good. That's good. We made it through all 20 basically. So, uh, which is a lot further than we've had recently. Uh, yeah. Most people have been getting stuck on like 14 or something like that. So, yeah. But I mean, we did have, I think that was one of the most, Sarcastic, sarcastic <laughs> questions we've <laughs> ever had in the history of the show. There was a few. Talent was farting, bro. Farting. I mean, it is a pretty good talent. It is a not, pretty good talent. I'm pretty good. Um, dream performance venue, all access magic. I want to hear about this paper route in Connecticut, man. I think I was like, what, 15, 14. Um, it was like a sales job. They ended up like taking us in a van with like six, seven different kids. And it's just like dropped us off in the neighborhood. Like, get subscriptions to pick you up in a couple hours. 
<laughs> oh boy, that is that sounds rough. That sounds <laughs> sounds very sketchy as well. Yeah, we packed oh, up yeah. like seven or eight kids in a van, <laughs> drove them around, <laughs> threw them out in the street. Go sell newspapers. Yeah, yeah, it sounds. <laughs> I mean, it's like at least you were getting dropped off by the van instead of picked up by the van. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Waiting to get picked up at the end. Yeah, he's waiting. So, <laughs> that was actually. Yeah, dude. Just make sure you get in the right van to go home. That's all. I mean, it's, getting a job out of a van isn't the worst thing. <laughs> uh, uh, employed. Tigger T said, uh, Daniel, you sound like a very busy guy. Uh, what kind of podcast do you enjoy listening to? You, or to, sorry. Or are you an, more of an audiobook guy? Oh, audiobooks is a good Neither. question. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, anything I learn or it, it's new people that I meet. Um, I mean, just I think with magic and like that kind of people, I think just meeting somebody and getting their point of view is where I get most of my knowledge. Mm. <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, do are you into any um like books or audiobooks? Like, have you listened or read anything recently? Uh, no, no. <laughs> no. Not at all. Uh, that doesn't uh, <clears throat> really. I mean, we have a way. We have a way, though, that you could. That you yeah, could. you could. Um, yeah. I mean, if you're if you are looking to, you know, fill your commute time with knowledge for free. I work from home, so my commute. Oh, okay. <laughs> so if you're if you're looking to uh, add some entertainment to your up and down stairs time while then, cooking, uh, <laughs> while you're cooking, you know oh. where you can go. Where? Please tell me. One could go to <laughs> audibletrial.com forward slash magic. Uh, we'll give you uh, free audiobooks, uh, and you also support this show. So uh, if you guys aren't on Audible, go check it out. It is a great way to fill up. Uh, I don't want to say fill up time, but educate yourself when you have free time or when you're driving and stuff like that. So yeah, uh, I know I throw Audible's mine on quite a bit. Got a, got a library of hundreds of thousands of titles. And uh, yeah, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's very expansive and you can expand your brain well, do you have right. an Audible membership? I do not. My, dude, well, this is where you're going today. <laughs> it's audibletrial.com slash magic. Perfect. When we end the podcast, Daniel, you got to go check it out. We'll send you some recommendations that will blow your mind. Uh, so Now, there was something you mentioned earlier, Danny. And I don't know if you realize that it's your lucky day. I mean, because I'm gonna, yeah. You gonna play it that way? You gotta play it that yeah. way so he can see it. Yeah. So Daniel, you said some. We asked so, you a question earlier in the podcast uh, a couple minutes ago, and uh, you had the perfect answer uh, because it kind of leads into a segment that we do every week. It's our most important segment of the entire show. Blaze, are you ready? Um, almost. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll I'll continue to segue. I'll continue. To, I thought I bought you like a good twenty <laughs> seconds there, so, dude. Don't worry about it. I'm trying to get this man. It's okay, dude. Um, I was like, I'll segue there. Uh, uh, Daniel, out of the twenty questions, if you had to choose one that you thought would relate to another segment in the show, what would that be? Private jet. Private jet. How did you know? How did you know? Because on this piece of paper, I have written. Uh, no, that's a newspaper. Paper, I've uh, a I'm note. sure no, we, a we asked you Jack. earlier about your favorite food. Question 10, favorite food. And do you remember what you said? Lasagna. 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 What's your favorite genre of lasagna? Meat. Lasagna. Veggie. Lasagna. Plain. Lasagna. Saucy. Lasagna. What's your favorite genre of lasagna? Keller. Lasagna. Cheese. Lasagna. Bonnet. Lasagna. Lasagna. Plain. Houdini.
What's yours? <clears throat> so, Daniel, that comes... I have a question for you. Daniel, what is your favorite genre of lasagna? I don't even know how to ask that question. Uh, well, I mean, there's many man claims lasagna. to be a lasagna fan. <laughs> Says his favorite food is lasagna. His favorite food, dude. But then doesn't have a genre to it. I prefer a dirty, nasty, cheesy, oily lasagna. Oh, okay, so a oily, dirty, mess. Lasagna. Yeah, dude, dirty, grungy lasagna. <laughs> yeah. Dirry, grungy lasagna. That's <laughs> it. Give me the Crust. grungiest lasagna. Crusty. Find, go around New York City, find me the grungiest lasagna you can, and the most sun faded headshot of Danny Aiello. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so. Uh. <laughs> Tigger T says, poor man didn't know what he was setting himself up for. <laughs> Dude, by the way, everyone viewing, that is what Ryan and I do behind the scenes every single time the lasagna song Every time song I plays, re-sing the song, we basically. We jam out so hard. And this time you got to actually see. <laughs> yeah, I usually am singing the song as we go along, but uh, I knew we were on air live, so I didn't want to sing it. But uh, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, We have a follow-up. We do have a follow-up question. Let's say that you bake a the grungiest lasagna you can find. And then you bake a second identical grungy-ass lasagna. And you want to take it away? <laughs> then you take said second grungy-ass lasagna <laughs> and place it atop the first pile of grunge. <laughs> Do you now have one lasagna or two? No, one lasagna. One lasagna, even with the grunge oh, level. They just, they just melt together. I mean, it's layered, right? It is layered. It is layered. It doesn't say how many layers it should be or not. No, it is true. It is true. I think a typical lasagna starts at like eight layers or some seven or eight layers. I think I read so. But that does confirm something with us. Mm -hmm. It does confirm that um, that Danny's already placed his dollar, his order rather. Um, he's placed his order for his lasagna mathematics hoodie at allaccessmagic.com slash shop. One plus one does equal one in the world of lasagna. So happy it's your favorite food, Danny. Mm -hmm. um, now you'll be able to rep it all the time. The lasagna mathematics hoodie available only at allaccessmagic.com forward slash shop. I yeah. guarantee you, if you get this lasagna mathematics hoodie, it will be the comfiest hoodie that you order. Yeah. Although, Blaze, I did see that uh, <clears throat> Tigger T said earlier that uh, if Lindsay was here, he'd be making fun of Blaze's shirts again. He can wear outfits without roasts now because Lindsay's yeah, usually not on in the Lindsay. afternoon. Uh, Lindsay, dude, so. this is, yeah. Yeah, this one, this is the one that, um, w didn't Caramel say that I looked like, um, like Jack Skellington in this, yeah, uh, in this someone, hoodie? I know they are ripping that hoodie the last time you wore it. Yeah, they, yeah, they were like, this is, uh, these, <laughs> these are my bones. Blaze in jail. All... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, uh, so, yeah, do you have any other shoots coming up, Daniel? That uh, that we should be looking out for, or photos that you've done recently that we should look out for? Um, I think just shot Brielle recently. Uh, she came uh, from Canada. That was a fun shoot. Nice. Uh, and then uh, I'll be performing at the lounge this Saturday. Oh, sweet! Nice, sweet. sweet. So, nice. if you guys are in Chicago, check out the Chicago Magic Lounge and see see Danny. Yeah, yeah that's sweet, man. And how do you enjoy performing at the lounge? It's awesome. I love it there. Oh. Uh, yeah. It's, I mean, have you been there yet? I haven't been there yet. No, I'd like to. I haven't either. Should I plan a Chicago trip soon? You should uh, for the summer, not for winter. Not for yeah, winter. Yeah, yeah for it's, summer. Yeah, it's definitely the a windy city, right? Yeah. It's, it's not. The, it's cold. Yeah. It's uh, cold, yeah. I heard it's gone as low as negative 60 degrees on windy days. <sighs> yeah, no thanks. No thanks. So summertime it is. <laughs> That's not LA. That's not no. LA. No. That's rough. Yeah, dude. New York, we barely get into the negatives. I mean, negative one, negative two. Mm, maybe. Yeah. 
Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. But- I mean, the other day, the other day with wind chill, it was like a couple weeks ago. It was like negative thirty. Uh, with wind and everything but yeah. then it went up to like 50 so it just it was like yeah. so fluctuating yeah. yeah yeah how would you compare chicago magic lounge to the castle experience it's like comparing chicago pizza to new york pizza ah just not the same <laughs> two different things right but, yeah. but in the end which one is better yeah <laughs> I don't know. It depends on what <laughs> what kind of situation. Like, what's the, the real question? Uh, yeah. In terms like, if of, I want to like, get venue? real deep dish into some card tricks, <laughs> where do I want to go? It's like venue. Um, I mean, you're looking at Art Deco, very beautiful lounge uh, at the Chicago Magic Lounge, and you know, the Magic Castle is you know old school. Um, is it card? I mean. I, I like them both equally. Yeah. Yeah. They are two very unique places. Mm-hmm. I mean, I haven't been to Chicago. I've seen lots of pictures. I actually made a close up pad of uh, <clears throat> the uh, first Chicago Magic Lounge uh, back in the day. So, but uh, Ryan, considering yeah. we've both never been there, we should pitch yeah, we should. that we do a duo show. We uh, should. Yeah. That would yeah. be really fun. Yeah. That would be. That would be. That'd it be would really be. Uh, uh, and then do a live podcast from there. Yeah. That would be sick. That'd be That'd pretty be really sweet. Sick. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll also be, if you're in the Pennsylvania area, I'll be at Keller's uh, this week on Friday and Saturday. Uh, so, yeah. Are you from uh, Pennsylvania? Or? Uh, no, I'm from Canada. Okay. So, but I will be uh, be up there this weekend. So, nice. There. Nice. nice. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, dude. And, uh, and I guess as we're uh, as we're wrapping up this uh, this episode, which I really appreciate you again coming on and talking about like your background, in photography and magic and everything. Um, where would you say that you find your most inspiration? Uh, shows, like Broadway shows. Really? Hmm. Wow. Um, I actually just went to see my first ballet um, a couple days ago. Wow. And. Just like being like actual like professional lighting and um, how to do these lights uh, is where like a lot of my inspiration for like photos coming. Wow, nice! Wow. I would have never expected that. So, yeah, Let's go out there, see shows, check out the ballet, guys. Check out the <laughs> ballet. If you want, if you want to be a good photographer, all you need is some ballet in your life. Go to ballet. Uh, no, that's awesome. That's one thing is anytime I'm doing writing and stuff, I usually have to go and watch a good show. Uh, or, you know, just something to inspire you to think differently or think better than what we're normally thinking. So it's great to hear that in photography, it's the same It's like you want to see things that inspire you or, you know, push with lighting and stuff like that. So, yeah, that's awesome. So everybody, if you're watching, check out the magician's photographer on Instagram, check out all of his work. He has some really, really incredible photos. I hope that we can get together again soon. Maybe do another shoot sometime or just what are you chill. Doing? What <laughs> are you doing? Fun, Daniel, what are you doing right now? Right now? Yeah. Like, could you give me like 20 minutes? Yeah. <laughs> you <laughs> you know? just yeah. <laughs> you just that was literally the last time we did the shoot. <laughs> Just like yeah. ran out of my house and then like he came with his luggage from Connecticut yeah. straight to Brooklyn. <laughs> straight to Brooklyn. Unpacked, we unpacked stuff in the middle of the street, got in yeah. front of the church, and then all right, later, yeah. I'll see you pictures a couple in a couple hours. I, I, Dude, I, that's I, what Danny's the best. And you and you always send the photos so fast too. It's just amazing. Yeah, I could definitely see that. The last time I saw Blaze in person was kind of the same thing. We did the lasagna eating contest, mm-hmm. and it was like had all my luggage running out of the hotel afterwards with his luggage because they got to yeah. take a road trip back to LA. So, yeah, dude. Danny, yeah, I've, the man's I've on the move. You know? I've been there. I've done it. I feel your pain. <laughs> no. Uh, I said, so fun time. had one last question. Uh, she said, uh, Daniel, what would you recommend to someone who has no idea where to start with photography? Um, I pick up a camera. And then step two would be <laughs> step two. <laughs> Throw it away. <laughs> Turn <laughs> it um, right in the trash. There, there was, uh, I mean, I. There's a, there's a book. Some old books. Um, I think what is it called? The 
life the life books is a series of like 17 books um on photography and you can probably find them online for probably about 45 50 bucks like the whole series yeah and it shows you like really in depth of like lighting colors and stuff like that and how the camera works nice uh, also YouTube. if you can yeah. take like a full like, course on composition and lighting i think those are the only two things you're going to need mm-hmm. you can take a picture with anything yeah definitely no i know my one friend uh pete mckinnon he's big on youtube in photography and has his channel and stuff like that so he's always teaching different things or giving tidbits away on 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 filming stuff or taking photos so yeah i'd say youtube check that out because there's endless uh endless videos on on how to make your photography better so Mm. and one thing that i've noticed with danny is like you have such a great kind of eye for it's it's awesome to walk around the streets with Danny and just see how you look around and the way that you notice, like the way lights are ha- casting against things and shadows and things. And it's just so cool because I'm like, I wish I could be inside his head right now and see <laughs> the world the way that he sees it. But it, it seems like you've just built up this kind of intuition, like this instinct because you've done so much. And I guess that's probably like, you know, for other people that are interested, they just need to get out and shoot and then they'll be able to build up that kind of instinct for what looks good and what doesn't. What I think like one of my biggest tips would be in terms of is don't take pictures of what you want, just take pictures of the light. Because mm. um, mm. a lot of times we want to take that sunset picture, which is backlit, it usually doesn't come out well. But if you see where the light's you know hitting, you'll probably get that better shot. Mm. Nice. Nice. That's really well, cool. I would say that that is a, a great way to end, but I, I want to give him one of these for that. Comment. Yeah, that's a really good. That's a really good piece of advice. That's a gold nugget. Mic drop moment. Don't you take don't photos. You don't Daniel, but uh, we did a little mic drop uh, animation on the screen. Oh, you did see it. Okay, you saw that one. Oh, okay, interesting. So, yeah, some come up and some don't. <laughs> good to know. But, uh, yeah, awesome, awesome. Well, thank you so much, Daniel, for coming on. You're absolutely awesome, and uh, and thank you for coming on short notice. Uh, it's kind of like a photo shoot. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Well, thanks guys for tuning in. We will catch you back here next week at 2 p.m. Uh, or sometime between then and three. Uh, don't worry about it. <laughs> don't worry about it. Uh, but uh, thanks guys for tuning in. We'll catch you guys next week. Thank you so much. See you soon. Peace. Peace.